Do you really think you can cook better than me? Oh, yeah, Gordon. You're having a laugh, aren't you? No, 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 this is, uh, you know, dead simple. This is the whole, the whole Murray food philosophy. Simple. Keep it simple, stupid. OK, so it's a thick-cut loaf, currants, thick, yeah. bit of milk. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> disgusting. Is that it? It's not <laughs> disgusting. So how many eggs you put in there? Three. You tight bastard. <laughs> <laughs> In my bread and butter pudding, I'm going to use three whole eggs and three egg yolks, so it gets really nice, rich, delicious custard. Can you stop watching me? Because I think you're trying to steal my recipe. <laughs> would you like to be a proper chef one day? Oh, God, no. No. What would put you off the hours? You, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, me? Well, you know, clearly plays havoc with a person, being a chef. I mean, I've hung out with Sarge a lot, and he's not normal. <laughs> So, what have you done first? Tell me. Well, I've done the bread, I've buttered the pan. You have to butter the pan, children. Yeah. Butter the pan or it won't come off the pan when you're washing it up. What are you <laughs> flavouring your custard with? Um, uh, well, sugar and lemon. No alcohol? <laughs> no alcohol, no. Are you putting alcohol in yours? Do you know, it, it's sort of autumn, so I'm going to put a little bit of Bailey's yeah. cream in there. That's classy. You know what ladies are like when they love Bailey's and yeah. ice. It's a fruit-based drink for the lady, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and do you know what? It just makes that a little bit moorish. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I believe you. You see, my baguettes are 24 hours old. Are they? Yes. That's what I'd heard. So, because the drier they are, yeah. the more custard they the absorb. The more custard they absorb. Yeah. yeah. Like, you've got big, fat, stodgy bread. Yeah. It's not going to absorb any custard. It's going to be like eating dry bread. Ow. You can't do that to our customers. They're your customers. I'm not here next week. So, what do you put at the bottom of your dish? Butter. And then no. the bread. And then Just the butter. bread on top. Buttered bread on top of the butter. You see, I'm like putting that. a little bit of surprise at the bottom of mine. Oh, that's exciting. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at what you're actually doing here. What's this? Dried cranberries. Oh, they're delicious. Aren't they? <laughs> Aren't they? It's just a relief I've got cystitis, because it's exactly what I need. <laughs> I know, come on, come on. Hey, hey, that's unfair. No, I'm tasting That's yours. good for the urinary uh, tract, that is. Is it? Yeah, it is, actually. Have you soaked these? Uh, yes. They're quite juicy. Just in hot water, that's all. Just to sort of rehydrate them a little bit. Oh, right. So, anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, you get the custard, right, which I didn't bother cooking, right, because there's no point, it's going to cook in the oven anyway. You right? He's complicating it again. And you pour the custard in on top, you put the raisins on, I've got some raisins left. You see, this is how I cook in a haphazard manner, Lane Gentlemen. I defy anyone to argue with my bread and butter pudding. OK, whilst Al is making this bread and butter sandwich full of raisins, what we've got here is um, the most amazing sort of soaked 24-hour old baguette, and it's done with a sort of Bailey's custard. In between the layers, we've got sultanas, golden raisins, a little bit of apricot jam, and then we're going to cover the top of that with sugar so it caramelises as it cooks in the oven. And that's going to be ten times better than old Sheffy's over there that tastes like stale bread that's been dipped in ale and left outside for three weeks, and even the cat won't eat it. OK, ready for yes. the oven? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Here it comes. Now, just before it goes in there... Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just, just have a look. Yeah. And even before they're cooked... Yeah. Yeah? You know yeah. exactly which one's going to come out best with a blind taster. That one. Oh, come on, Al. The normal one. You know, it's not down to the appearance, is it? No, it's, it's down, down to, to the, the taste. What matters is the taste, yeah. Taste, taste, taste. OK, you want to say a little prayer before...? No, no, no. No? I'm a believer. You're a believer. <laughs> OK, good luck, my man. Thank you. It looks dry. Yeah. Right, Christopher, how are you? Very well. How are yes? You? Good. Now, what's the secret behind the crumble? You must have one ingredient um, up your sleeve that's going to sort of help taste it, help make it taste better. Demerara sugar to make it crunchy. Yes. Caster sugar to make it sweet. Uh huh. Chilled bowl. Yep. So that the butter doesn't melt too much. Okay. Very technical there with the yeah. old hands. You look a little bit like Gary Rose. That Thanks. orangutan. This is a very straightforward rhubarb crumble, except we're going to saute the rhubarb off in some fresh vanilla, finish it a little bit of butter, and then just slightly sprinkle it with sugar so it makes a bit of a caramel. And what are you putting on top of your uh, crumble, Chris? Um, I think I'm going to go for an old favourite that yep. everyone likes. Um, custard. What are you putting on? No, I'm just going to serve it with some mascarpone, lemon mascarpone. Lemon mascarpone? Yes, just something a little bit sort of... I suppose, not as rich as custard, but something a little bit lighter. I don't think my hand's going to like yours, you know. This crumble mix is actually quite interesting because we've got some hazelnuts in there, some oats, some flour, demerara sugar, and then just a very light sort of lemon zest in there, just to make it a little bit more vibrant, a little bit sort of easier to eat. Um, one of the tricks of my nan is to keep everything cold, so um, keep your fingertips cold before you knead the butter, and also the bowl has to be chilled. 
but then it can get moist, so if you wipe it with a tea towel, then it's not moist. Then the butter doesn't kind of go into a paste, that you can still keep it into a crumble, because sometimes, um, if things are warm, then it gets a bit too soppy. This is a pickle ginger, and this ginger here is more associated with when you're eating sushi, but it's actually quite sort of light in pickle, and um, it's got rid of that sort of rawness, and it's not so sweet. Um, Chris? Yeah? It's burning. Oh, um, yeah. Can we get some more rhubarb, yeah. please? And Chris, so that we always remember in a kitchen. Yeah. When it's brown, it's cooked. When it's black, it's. The hobs are like industrial hobs, they're too hot. Now it's the hob now, yeah? yeah. Nothing to do with Nana, nothing to do with your lack of concentration. Now it's the hob. Well, it's your fault, you keep talking. What was the food like um, in EastEnders in that calf? Oh, it was awful. Was it really? It was awful, yeah. Who was the chef? Well, the, uh, the props guys used to cook the food. Oh, really? Um, and to all their credit, they were quite good, but obviously, if they cooked it like half an hour before, it could be cold. Yeah. I'm just going to put the final topping on top of the rhubarb. And it's actually quite interesting because the oats absorb more of the juice than it would be if it was just sort of flour and butter. And the butter gets it really nice and crispy, and the oats just start to absorb all that flavour from the rhubarb. How long for Nana's recipe? Um, maybe about 10 minutes at the most. 10 minutes, OK. Yeah. Did you take this long learning your lines? No. No. Look at that. Nice, homemade, normal rhubarb crumble. Bring it over. I always like to compare them just yeah. before they go in the okay, oven. OK, well, let's put them together. It's a bit of a chef's thing. Now. Yours looks like bird seed. OK. Or cat litter. Cat litter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think mine looks nice, you know, old-fashioned. You know that. You haven't tasted it yet, yet you're slagging it off. Chris. Yeah, I know. But I think mine's going to taste better anyway, because yours has got odd ingredients in it. Right, ready? Yeah. Here we go, big boy. Oh, good can luck, have, by the way. Can I have the um, top shelf? You can have whatever shelf you Thank wish. You. I'd like to wish you the best. No, it's just a luck thing, and yours looks awful. Ladies, can we get going? Uh, nice, clean uh, hands. Now, don't right, get Kim. nervous, cos right, I'm, I'm here. Doing this, then. Don't What's start that? getting twisted, cos I affect men like that, you know. Right, come on. Oh, oh, dear, oh, dear. Right. Now, I'm doing a bit of a sort of uh, straightforward classic trifle. Um, we're doing a trifle with caramelised peaches and clementine, very festive, done with the most amazing custards made with vanilla, and then a nice twist at the end. We're going to get some salted peanuts and turn them into a caramel salted peanut. Aggie, yes. tell me what you're doing. OK, I'm, uh, I'm beating up my egg yolks and the sugar and vanilla paste. Yes. I'm going to put a wee bit of uh, cornflour in, cos I'm slightly nervous that right. it... It'll split, and I don't want that to happen. OK. And I've also... Can I just say, I've made yeah. my own trifle sponges That's here. That's amazing. With goose eggs that I bought from a farm That's yesterday. fantastic. You may as well go home, in Is my that... opinion. <laughs> oh, dear, I do. So, we've got to bloody well win this. We have Kim. still got to win this. So, for my trifle, I'm going to make um, the most amazing custard, but a very simple custard, not like Kim and Agus. This is sort of done with sugar, eggs and fresh vanilla pods. Do you know what? I've used the wrong <laughs> cream. I love you already. You swear like a chef. If Aggie wins, he's going to cry like a baby. I sense that, you know. I'm bloody determined to win. Sorry? I'm determined no, to win. No, I'm, no. So, I'm afraid I'm very competitive. Now, what's the most important tip you could give to anyone out there about keeping their kitchen at home clean? What would you say to first? To keep your um, working up cloth absolutely clean. Stop spreading the bacteria. And clean as you go? Absolutely clean as you go. That's right. Clean as you go. And get everyone else to muck in. So the peaches were just going to quarter. Roast them off in a little bit of sugar. The exciting thing about caramelising these peaches is done with the most amazing sugar, very fragrant Moscovado sugar. And that gives a really nice sort of rich, syrupy colour onto the peaches. Well, will you stop that, oh, for goodness this sake? This man's a big man, you know. Dear, oh dear, you know, I feel like I've got a wheel of curry this. back in the kitchen. A bit of uh, here, do you need to take <laughs> off? These love hands are growing Kim, a bit. Mind sake, I don't mind hanging up. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Shit, I feel like I've got a baby rhino Kim, on my stop. back. Stop, you're putting him off his food, for God's sake. <laughs> if they're trying to distract me, it really is working, you know that, cos I can't, can't just concentrate on anything right now. God, I've never had a 64-year-old grab my boobs like that. Um, now I'm giving the Swiss roll a little bit of a sort of, um, bit of a Scottish effect. I'm sort of dousing it in Grand Marnier. <laughs> uh, can I just say, <clears throat> I can't believe the mess. I Look know, at the state of it! Right, you're absolutely How right. clean is your house? Wait till you see the mess I make of you, dear lady. Look at the floor! That's deliberate! I've roasted the peach and the clementine off in um, muscovado sugar. They've sort of um, been caramelised, beautifully coloured, and now I'm just going to add them to the sponge. And then we're going to add the custard. They're very splashy things, aren't they? 
those, you know. I know uh, not only is my brain set, but the custard's about to set, so I'm going to put that in the fridge to cool down. And once that's nice and cool, we're going to finish it with a creme fraiche, finish with mustavado sugar, and hopefully get rid of that honey monster. I'm finishing my trifle off with some salted caramel peanuts. It's just salted peanuts in a pan, a sprinkle of sugar, and a sprinkle of salt. But this is not any salt. This is not a powder salt. This is called sel de garin. It's a sort of rare grey sea salt. Very powerful, very delicious, and it goes well when you make a caramel. I just leave them to cool down. Rolling pin, break them up and sprinkle them on top of your trifle. <laughs> Custard on top. Now, most importantly, get it in the fridge and let it set for about 35, 40 minutes. This is a children's chocolate brownie because I don't think you should put extra bits in. It should just be pure chocolate brownie. This is really cheap, so you can make it, if you're having masses of people to a party, you can make it for loads of people. We had it at our wedding, actually. Not that I'm a cheapskate or anything. So, get your brush and lightly brush the inside of the pan. Now, all it is is a block of chocolate, break it in half and just grate. And just pour the chocolate in there and then roll it round. Right, Sarah, how are we doing? This is cocoa, sugar and flour. Yep. And then this is the eggs, and you just pour it in and there. It's and that's it. That's it, yeah. So well, it no, tastes great. I'm sure it does. Now, no chocolate in there? No. And it's got, it's got cocoa powder. Just cocoa powder? Yeah, and, oh, and then I have to grease the tin. And that looks like something you've nicked from your granny? Um, yeah, that's yeah. the <laughs> And then that goes in there, and how long does that cook for? 25 minutes, or maybe a bit more if it doesn't look cooked. Yeah, because it should be nice and crispy on the outside and soft yeah, and gooey in the middle. Yeah, Gungy. Gungy. That's the word. <laughs> You're a lady who likes pressure. You've I got do. 37 guests coming round on I... Boxing Day. Christmas Day. Christmas Day. Yes. That's a yeah. big table, that 37. That, that is a big table. And you could cook yeah. in not single handedly, surely? Well, sort of single handed. I've got this turkey that's kind of huge. Huge. So have you got lots of Christmas? Uh, I think we've got about um, 18 or 20. Hey, that's just as bad. I know. Crazy. So yeah. Do you do lots of entertaining then? I'm not very good at the dinner party thing, you know that. It's not the kind of thing I, um, I really enjoy doing, to be totally honest. So this is why I couldn't be a cook, because I think this is taking ages and it's really boring. I'm thinking, God, hurry up. How do you know so much about property? I've got a building company. I do a boy's job, you see. You okay. do a girl's job, I do a boy's job. I do a girl's job. Yeah, that's the whole gripe. I wish women would get back in there and do their job. I... You know that. <laughs> women do make the best chefs, you know that. I know, well, obviously, women it's do me. everything best. No, 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 well, not quite everything. Hello. <laughs> not quite everything. You're a bit of a matchmaker, aren't you? I am. It is a bit of an obsession of mine. It always has been, actually, which... Serious. Um, now, do you do that over food? Yeah, no, well, the best place to meet someone is over food and booze, isn't it? Food and booze, yes. Yeah, st stick food and booze uh -huh. and a few Can't... single people together and they're going to get married. And what about someone like our resident food critic? I mean, is there, a, is there a woman out there that's mad enough to sort of date him? So, how would you describe him? Moany, whingy, beardy, short ass. I think he'd definitely get someone. <laughs> he'd definitely get someone. <laughs> Flipping egg. <laughs> now, the chocolate and the butter's melted. I've whisked the eggs lightly. I've folded them in. Sarah's is going to be slightly gungy in the centre, she said. <laughs> Sounds very ominous. Um, and mine, of course, is going to be lined with, like, chocolate buttons and these little things, pecans. I have to say, at this stage, without getting too carried away, a damn sight more appetising than Sarah's. <laughs> Mind you, I said that about the trifles last week as well, didn't I? Also, I think that putting nuts in it is a yes. bit like putting leeks in macaroni cheese. Oh, really? See, it's just wrong. It's like put... ruining the purity. I'm now just going to lift that out and put them in to the moulds. And then, hopefully, we'll be ready. So only fill the mould up two-thirds because they're going to rise slightly and then we leave it nice and soft and gooey in the centre. And those chocolate buttons, hopefully, will be intact but slightly runny. I could have refurbished a five-bedroom house in the time it takes to melt some butter. Like, how frustrating. This one's going to eat it and you've just got washing up to do. Whilst you're uh, pregnant, OK, and yeah. obviously my wife's been pregnant three times, I put weight on to make her feel happy. Does it happen oh, the same with your husband? Such a sweetie. Does he put weight on to make um, you feel sort he of is, actually. less fat in bed? <laughs> no, he does still does say, he? good God, you're fat, every time I have no clothes on. Serious. So, which oh, is true, yeah. let's be honest. No, you're going to stay confident now, because they're not cooked. Now, let me have a quick look at yours. OK. Just like the bike sheds. You can look at mine and let me look at yours. <laughs> yeah. Cheeky. Mm, that's nice. Is that... I've got to say, you, yours does look like you cook for a living, and mine does look like I don't. I always say that to my con sort of fellow contestants, good luck. You're wishing me luck. 
Yeah, I, I can... think with your track record, I should be wishing you luck. I can tell you what attitude already, your hands are folded. Are you in a mood? Yeah, like body language. It's like... Body language. I know this kind of dessert's a bit beneath you. It's not complicated enough for you, is it? Yeah. Not unless you're going to make some chocolate doodly dar thing on the top. Just going to be a nice, simple fig tart. Nothing tart? More. You're making a tart? A you're in the kitchen, so I thought nothing better to do than a nice you're tart. You're making a fig tart? Yes! You absolute slimy i That's... just going to bake figs. <laughs> no. What do you mean? Since when did you add the pastry bit? I thought we were cooking the same thing. It's a fig recipe. You had your bake. Well, I can give you my word that any women in the audience will not eat pastry. So oh. you're wasting your time. Oh. I'm making the kind of dessert women like. Every Fruit. We'll not find pastry. Out. Fruit. Right, OK. Uh, I'm not going to argue. Not now. We've only been in the kitchen <laughs> three minutes. Cool. Dear, dear. This is a bit of a very easy dessert, which is baked figs, which you just cut up and then you squeeze so they open up a bit. And also, when you buy the figs, you don't want to be buying figs that are too ripe because they'll disintegrate before you even start. Bugger do, off. Do, 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 don't, do, don't put me off. Do, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> just move away. <laughs> I'm just sprinkling over some brown sugar. Janet's doing a baked fig um, dessert. I'm doing a very, very simple, straightforward fig tart, which Janet thinks is slightly ponty, but it's not. It's just puff pastry, frangipan, which is made out of almonds, egg sugar and icing sugar. We're going to spread the frangipan on the puff pastry and just bake it in the oven for two to three minutes. And then once the frangipan starts to cook, I'm going to take out the tart and lay the figs on there. In the oven, two and a half, three minutes, Done. In we go. I'm just adding some marsala, which is a sweet Italian uh, dessert wine. You can use it. It's worth having a bottle of this at home, actually, because you can use it in uh, quite a lot of desserts. Good for trifle. Now, I know you're trying to put me off, but look what's happening now to my fig tart. Pastry's yeah. half cooked. Mm -hmm. Frangipan started to rise. All I'm going to do now is just put the figs yeah, but... on top. That doesn't look poncy to you, does it? And look what I'm doing. Ice and sugar. Yeah. And five spice. OK. Oh, yeah. Glaze over the tart. Oh, I'm so determined I'm going to win this one. You know that. Huh? Just have a little smell of that. It smells fantastic. Huh? It's great. Now we're going to glaze them in the oven. How are yours doing? They're fine. They need a bit longer. Now, it's quite fascinating. You are a classified foodie, but was it your mum who taught you? Or... Oh, no, my mother couldn't cook. My oh, mother really? was a ghastly cook. Really? She could only cook. I wish she belonged to that generation where they cooked everything for far, far too long. Stews. Oh, Sunday lunch. I mean, they Gray literally beef. put the meat on the minute you finish, finish breakfast. And then there's that strange working class meal called tea, which yep. you have on a Sunday, where you open a tin of ham and you have the salad, which is a lettuce with two tomatoes. <laughs> can I look at and my figs? Yes, of course you can. Yeah, they're done. They're done. How do you know they're done? Because they're soft to the touch. Yes. Um, are you cooking this for your birthday? Uh, we're not allowed to say it's your 59th birthday, are we? Say I'm 59, and you can say I'm nearly as old as your mother, you rude. You are the same age as my mum. I look great. So, I know you do. Now, do you know what I'm going to do now? Just while they're coming out of the oven, still nice and warm, I'm just going to glaze it with a little bit of honey. Heat it up, and then back in the oven for 30 seconds. Now, do you cook at home with your partner? We don't cook at the same time. Why? So I've been married four times, Gordon. I know where it all goes wrong, so, so I don't want it to go wrong. So we never cook the same meal at the same time. So that's where it goes. And pear also, he he wants to eat things like mashed potato. I can't eat mashed potato. I'll have an ass the size of a house. So I'm doing a very simple, straightforward chocolate tart. No frills, no spills, no creme fraiche, no vanilla chocolate tart with roasted hazelnuts. Um, we're going to make uh, the most amazing pastry. Um, roll it out. Line it in this um, flan ring. Put the cream and the milk on to boil. Add that to my little chocolate buttons. There's a very well-known Elizabeth David chocolate cake that uses ground almonds instead of flour and keeps it lovely and moist and quite fudgy in the middle. This is really based on that, except I'm just using chestnuts cooked in a little cream and milk, mashed instead of the ground almonds. But really, it's a tribute to, to her recipe. But it's lovely at Christmas because it's got the chestnuts in. Milk, cream up to the boil, hazelnut praline on top of the chocolate buttons. And then, quite simply, cream and milk onto the chocolate and stir away. Now, the thickening agent of this particular tart are whole eggs. And what the egg does is, as the cream and the chocolate and the milk cook, of course, the eggs help to set it. Lightly whisk up the eggs and fold that in to the chocolate. Now, I'm just going to lightly toast my nuts. 
Now, Hugh, you're highly competitive, aren't you? Even though you're living in the countryside, you still have that chef's competitive streak in you, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like to win, Gordon. Whoa. No, it's all right. You thought it had all gone horribly wrong for me there, didn't you? I was hoping it had, you know that, Hugh. Yeah. I'd get fired from your kitchen so far. <laughs> now, look at my part. Look at that. Look at... <laughs> Oh, my God. Does that matter to bring you out in a sweat? I'd be getting clipped round the head if this was... What? I probably am about to be clipped what? by the head. Weren't you fired from the River Cafe for being a messy puppy? Yes. yes. In a word, yes. Flipping the heck. There we go. We're baking the tart blind. That means we're going to line this ring with a pastry and then bake that off first. So that's an added insurance policy that, A, the pastry stays nice and crisp, and, B, all we have to do then is just cook the chocolate filling. So baking blind simply means cooking it twice. Do you miss not being a professional chef running a restaurant full time? Um, I don't miss it at all because I was quite no? I was quite a bad professional chef. Really? I just you know I have a bit like Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the discipline. But what I, what I do now I, I enjoy very much. You know, it's, yep. what we do in Dorset isn't really a restaurant. It's more informal than that. It's about telling people where the food comes from. I have a great kitchen team. But it's sort of more of a cookery school than a restaurant. Uh huh. And um, did you have long, straggly hair at the River Cafe? I've always had long, straggly hair. How many times a year do you wash it? I think I'm due for about once a month. Seasonal. Seasonal. Did you have to wear a hair nap? I could be due for my pre-Christmas wash any day now. You're distracting me, and you're making me over whip the egg whites. <laughs> the thing about folding in egg whites is never fold more than you need to, but you do have to get it properly incorporated which means going deep to the bottom of the bowl and just lifting the mix, and that's it. And in it goes. And that just goes in there for 25 minutes. The really important not to overcook it so that you don't want it to dry out. So, out. Nuts. Sprinkle the nuts at the bottom. Chocolate in. It does look very good. We don't fill the tart right to the very top here. Two thirds of the way in, open the oven door, and then get the rest of your mixture and top up the tart. Uh, so that's so you don't have to carry a really full tart over exactly. to the oven. Exactly. So it gets really nice and full. That, that's obviously a very useful tip for chefs who've been drinking too much on Christmas Day. Absolutely. Oh shit! <laughs> I dropped the cloth in it. I've already messed up my pudding. Are you okay? Yeah, I just went in to have a little look and I dropped the cloth. You see, that's why I got fired. Things like that. I dropped the cloth in the middle of my cake. I hope that's a clean one.